Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to MacChat this morning, um, especially to those who are here and those who are joining us uh, through the live stream. I wasn't expecting up to be up here again this morning, but it's lovely to join you um, today. We've um, had some bit louder. Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah, we've had some illnesses during the week, so a few of us had to stop uh, things, and we're very thankful that uh, Chi could uh, come and preach uh, God's word uh, from Psalm 100 to us this morning. And uh, please be praying for Matt, who was meant to be here today. Um, he's uh, not really very well after a business trip and uh, probably catching some bugs on the plane. Uh, but welcome uh, to Mac Chat this morning. Uh, I've just got a few announcements for us to start with. Let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, we are now in week three of Psalms of Joy. And uh, as I said, she's going to share with us this morning from Psalm 100. So I hope you're ready with some joy of the Lord in your heart um, today. Uh, just an update on uh, where we're at with Alpha. So it's not this coming Tuesday, but the Tuesday after that uh, we start our Alpha course on Tuesday evenings. Um, there's still time for you to come yourselves if you feel like you'd like a refresher on why are we here. Um, but also, please, we want to encourage you to invite anyone who you know who might be questioning what's going on in our world today? Um, what are some potential answers out there? Um, yeah, please get in contact with one of the staff if you've um, yeah, got someone on your heart and you'd like to invite them. There's still some of the flyers in the foyer. And thank you to those who've been distributing the flyers as well. Um, when we had our team leaders meeting for Alpha on Tuesday night, uh, there were a couple of slots that we'd love to be able to still fill and um, some 8.30 people may be interested in this. We've got one or two dates where we'd love to have some home-cooked um, treats for after the meal and when we have tea and coffee. So if you're uh, the baking type and would like to uh, help us out with that, uh, please once again come and see either Chi or myself or Sharon. Um, and let us know. <coughs> so in conjunction with Alpha, uh, we're also in term four on Sunday mornings going to have uh, a series, which I think is going to be really exciting, called Life Stories. <coughs> Excuse me. And different people um, who are part of our MacChat family or close to our MacChat family are going to come and share um, their story in some sort of creative way so that we can see how God is working in our midst and be encouraged by that. And uh, those of you who have friends who either may get to Alpha or may not get to Alpha, you might like to uh, invite them along to a Sunday morning to be able to hear some of those life stories. Um, yeah, leave that in your hands and uh, please be praying for that, that it's a, a great time where we uh, are encouraged uh, by one another's stories. Uh, just to remind you that uh, we're starting back this coming Friday in our junior youth group and senior youth group. If you know of anyone who's um, got youth age, higher, higher primary school age, year three to six, or high school age children, uh, we'd love to have them come and join us um, at youth group. And this term, uh, YMAC and JMAC are looking at the book of Philippians. And just like we're looking at joy in the Psalms, they're all term going to be looking at the um, concept of joy in Philippians, and we're calling it Stars of Joy. Um, we had a great preparation leaders meeting on Friday night, putting that all together. So it's exciting. Uh, next Saturday, we have a monthly maintenance morning, um, and uh, there'll be jobs to do all around the place. So if you're keen um, in helping out in some way, uh, we'd love to have you there uh, from 9am to 11am on Saturday. Uh, next Sunday, here in the 8.30 service, uh, we'll have some visitors along with us because we're having our two little children who are part of the 10.30 service being dedicated, um, Ella and Yosef, which are the children of David and Grace. Um, I'm not sure if you know them. Uh, I think they come to 8.30 every so often when it suits their um, schedule. Uh, but that's something uh, really um, exciting to, uh, to come and join in that dedication. So 
yeah, let us be prepared in our hearts for that, to welcome them and their guests who will come. And I believe they're putting on a special morning tea um, as well for us. Um, before I finish the announcements, um, some sad news that some of you may have already heard that um, Sandra um, from our service here at 8.30, uh, who's now in Trinidad, her sister passed away. Um, during the week, is that right? Yeah. Um, so let's be praying for Sandra and all of her family at this time, uh, especially since she's so far away from all of you who are have been her close family for such a long time. So, yeah, please be, um, be at prayer for uh, Sandra and her extended family um, during this time. <clears throat> Let us come before the Lord and uh, feast upon his words uh, from a psalm of David. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You, who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those who choose and, and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. God our Saviour, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the Father of seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Let's pray as we come before him this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we're, we acknowledge this morning that you are the creator of all things. And when we think about those images in your word of the roaring seas that you calm, the amazing creation of every day, the sun rising and the sun setting. We take those things for granted, but we thank you for them. Even though sometimes we feel that like our life is in turmoil, Lord, we thank you that when we see the rising sun and the setting sun each day, we know you are here with us. And Lord, as we uh, come before you and hear from your word, as we sing with joy, songs to worship you. Lord, speak to our hearts. Help us to know your love and your truths that will set us free. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, will you join with me this morning to sing our first hymn, uh, which is called, O oh Lord, You Are My God and King. Please stand and sing.
good morning. We're a bit few in number this morning, aren't we? We've got oh, yesterday up at Granny Smith's best for too much. It took too much out of too many people. There we are. Join me in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we are in awe of your creation, which is all about us in our daily lives. And yet, as we go about our daily lives, we don't seem to recognise those things of greatness and majesty. The brilliance of the countless stars in the black velvet darkness of night. The miracle of the changing seasons, which enables our planet to go through periods of winter, spring, summer, autumn and winter again, each time adding something to that about us and yet enables this marvellous planet to rejuvenate countless times and keep on going to support us as it does. Whilst a significant, what an ex a significant and effective plan for continuing this is. We thank you, Lord, that we have been chosen to live and enjoy this wonderful and bountiful place. Yet we so often fail to take the time in our frenetic lives to stop and consider our good fortune and give you thanks for our privilege. During the recent past, the world has been infected by a new and challenging health crisis caused by the unique COVID-19 virus with the potential to decimate the population of our planet. But because of the development of medical science and the breakthroughs brought about by the intelligence of men and women, blessed by your hand with these gifts, effective treatments have been very quickly developed, lessening the impact of this scourge. We give you thanks for your blessing and of this result. Unfortunately, since the beginning of time, mankind has allowed disagreements between nations to often escalate into armed conflict. We earnestly pray that the current and escalating tensions between powerful nations will be settled peacefully. The rise of Antichrist forces throughout the world is of particular concern. Christians are being brutally persecuted, churches and schools destroyed, all because of a faith in you and love. Dear Lord, we pray for the persecuted and that you will give them strength in their hour of need and help us to recognise it and do what we can to assist. Lord, you must despair that there are so many in our society claiming to believe in the teachings of Christ and yet do little or nothing to apply these principles in their daily lives. Selfishness and greed prevail. The erosion of ethical standards in our individual organisations and all forms of government is regrettable and assist in a, in a sympathetic way of getting through to these problems is sought. 
we pray that you will empower those who seek to expose and correct these behaviours is assisted. Help us to individually not only talk the talk, but walk the walk, and let us direct our attitudes in this coming week to be faithful to James 3, verse 21, which says, faith without action and deeds is barren and dead. Dear Lord, hear our prayers today as we come together and say that prayer we do each week. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jim, for that very powerful and um, heartfelt and thought-provoking prayer. Uh, yeah, got me thinking. Thank you. Uh, we have community hymn singing uh, this morning and uh, we have three hymns, uh, selected verses from there. I believe the right ones are on the screen uh, and they've been chosen today. Um, Brother, Let Me Be Your Servant, uh, chosen by Anne. Thank you, Anne. And two from Sharon, Spirit of God, Unseen as the Wind and How Great Thou Art. Oh, and then there's a hymn at the end of that, uh, hymn 454. Lord of our life and God of our salvation. And I'm not sure if someone chose that or whether it was Colin. And is it right that we stay seated for community hymn singing? Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, thank you, Hannah.
stand with me to sing uh, our final hymn together. Today's Bible reading is Psalm 100. It's a very joyful psalm. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Thank you. Dear Lord, you who was, who is, and is to become, we worship your name this day. Thank you because of your promises that are true every day. We praise you for the wonderful deeds in our lives. Your grace has enabled us to gather here to worship. We glorify your name for always being there for us. You promised never to leave us or forsake us. May you help us to worship you in truth and spirit for the honour of your name. Let us pray for all people in all parts of this troubled world <clears throat> and in all kinds of need. Lord, shine your light upon those who live in danger of violence, persecution, oppression, displacement, loss and injustice because of race, belief or who they are. We pray that the hearts of those who visit the evils of prejudice and greed upon others may be turned from darkness and awakened to the true light of the love and compassion of the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for those who live in fear of famine, 
disease, destitution, and upon those who live without hope, faith, or love, that they may know your true love and the joy of your salvation. Lord, shine your light upon your church <clears throat> and upon all the people of faith and their love may shine in the darkness. Uniting in their endeavours for the common good, may we, in the ministries which are our lives, proclaim the good news as our good news of our faith shines forth. Lord, shine your light upon those who suffer in mind, body and spirit. Give them courage and hope that their troubles and bring them joy of your redeeming love. You turn our darkness into light and in your light we shall see light. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing once more before Chi comes and brings uh, the word of the Lord to us. Uh, we're going to sing, As the Deer Pants for the Water, another beautiful psalm uh, that help us realise how close um, God is to us, uh, just like a, a deer um, drinking water. Let's stand and sing, As the Deer Pants for the Water. It's, been, it's great to be back up here. Uh, good morning to you all. How are you all doing? Good, good. Uh, you over there in the live cam uh, and the live stream, good morning to you as well. Uh, it's great to be here. We're looking at Psalm 100, which I have here on screen. You probably can't read it because the script is bad and it's yellow and white. So, yeah. Uh, but anyways... We'll leave it with that. Uh, we've been looking at the topic of joy for a few weeks now, haven't we? Uh, it's a wonderful topic, isn't it? It's uh, of, uh, that we as emotional beings, and yes, that applies to you too, men. Um, 
that we need joy as an emotion in our lives. Dave and Diane has helpfully pointed out that God is a God of joy and that our joy is based in God. But joy is a funny little Christian word that's becoming a little bit out of fashion in the secular world. Um, the amount of times that I've used the word joy outside of church in this past week, you want to have a guess how many times I've used it? Nil. That is correct. Zero. I hope that's not the case for you. But for me, in interacting with the secular world, I find myself using this word joy almost only exclusively when referring to a person. Now, I'm sure there are many joys in your life, and I think we have one here too in day 30 service. Yes, yes we do. Um, see, joy is not an emotion. Uh, it is, not a, it is an emotion, uh, as an emotion. It's not a word that the world uses. But yet, it is a profoundly important word for us Christians to help us live in this world. And I wonder, have you ever wondered why we don't use the word joy anymore in the world? So, well, naturally, I had that question. And I naturally looked up the difference between joy and happiness to see what the world has to say about it. And if you remember back to Dave, uh, he quoted Rob Bell and compared the heaviness of joy and with the lightness of happiness. And I think that's one helpful way of looking at it. Uh, and it reflects the definition given by the website Diffan, which compares anything that you'd normally want to compare uh, with. And some person on the internet somewhere has done the work and compiled that information together and uh, has done that legwork and has, tell you, and has told us how they're different. Now, the font is small. You're not, I'm not expecting to, you re to read it all. I'm not even going to talk about all of it. I'm just going to point out some important facts. Uh, so happiness, the meaning is happiness is an emotion, which is one ex one's experience feeling ranging from contentment and satisfaction to bliss and intense pleasure. And the definition of joy, joy is a stronger, less common feeling uh, than happiness. Witnessing or achieving selflessness to the point of personal sacrifice frequently triggers this emotion, feeling spiritually connected to a God or to people. So it sounds relatively about right for you know, what we've been talking about. Uh, but I want to point out that one particular line here in the motions. Uh, they've, his, this bloke here, his, or lady, whoever it is, they've defined happiness as an outward expression of elation. And joy is an inward peace and contentment. I look around and it seems that this inward, outward division is a, a pretty common way uh, the world defines the difference between happiness and joy. But then that's kind of where it got weird, because as any good modern scholar, I then moved on to YouTube for anything related to joy. Um, and all I get are results from TED Talks. I literally screenshotted this uh, from just looking at it. This, these are the top hits. Uh, you get results from TED Talks and quotes from famous celebrities on happiness. Uh, and saving the time for you to kind of look through the, all of this yourself, though you are free to do so if you so choose. Um, some of you are on YouTube already. Please don't switch over and start looking. Stay on the live stream. Um, people find the happiness. Uh, oh, people find the happiness by looking inward and finding contentment or self fulfillment. That's what these TED talks are all about: self fulfillment, contentment, inward. And They've conflated the two together, haven't they? they? They've combined happiness and joy into this one idea. And to be truly happy, as they define it, you need an inward peace and contentment. And it leads to an outward expression of elation. There's no division between the inner and the outer, according to these TED Talks. Turns out that... Uh, to be happy, according to the internet, you need to find joy. They just don't call it that. They get so close to enlightenment, but they fall short because they look for joy within themselves rather than in God. 
which has really been the focus of our uh, series this term, oh, this mini series, mini major series, um, in uh, in the Psalms. The, there's something to learn from this secular view of joy, I think, that while they've really oversimplified the relationship between joy and happiness, there is more in common between joy and, 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 and happiness than there are differences. And my biggest fear when talk, coming up here on the stage and talking about the two, uh, and, and talking about the joy, is to focus too much on these differences and end up unintentionally driving a wedge between the two and limiting joy to be less than what it actually is. Over the last few weeks, we've been building a foundation of joy uh, in God, and, that it's, and that's great because it allows me to come to today's psalm, Psalm 100, and build upon that foundation and upon that. Uh, and, and, and upon that. Uh, Psalm 100 shows us an example of how, it is, how joy is not just an intellectual exercise, but an exercise of affections as well. Psalm 100 is a small psalm, but it's full of action. Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, in fact, it has seven actions, seven, uh, seven verbs that make up the psalm, which is defined as a psalm of thanksgiving or psalm of praise, uh, of grateful praise in other translations like the NIV. Psalm 100 is painting us a picture of a joy that's thriving. And it looks like a song of praise and thanksgiving. And that's the title of my sermon today. It's a thankful praise to God. Um, and within these seven action words, it neatly groups itself into a threefold response in giving thanks to God, which will be my three points for today. Uh, it's uh, a heart response of thanks to God, a head response of thanks to God, and a hand response of thanks to God. What I mean is this, Christian joy is affectionate, that it is emotional, that it is intellectual, and it is actionable. And let's take a look at our first triplet of actions. The psalm starts with a universal call to make noise to God. That's everyone. The psalm itself is not attributed to anyone, though it's in the middle of many psalms by David. Uh, but here our writer, the Psalter, his first action is for everyone to make noise to God. Shout to the Lord. Worship Him with joy and come to Him with joyful singing. A song of praise to God starts with a universal calling to make our joy known to others. We are called to worship God, to give God His dues. And in what manner? We worship God with joy and gladness. And our third action is to come to God with singing. But what type of singing? It's joyful singing. These are actions of passion. These are actions that command passion. Shouting, singing, worshipping, they all come from the heart. And this, this actually tells us a lot about joy. That it is passionate and full of affections. It's a joyful Christian is passionate about God and his or her affections for God is evident. This is a tough teaching for us Presbyterians, but I think it's actually more a Sydney evangelical thing. Uh, theolo theological teaching is our strength, but joyful singing, oh, probably not our strength, not our greatest strength, let alone shouting and making noise. Ooh. And so, where do we learn about this passion? Well, one ne needs to look no further than a professional sports match. It's f round 14 of the 2017 season of AFL. It's the Sydney Swans versus uh, Essendon Bombers at the SCG. And with five minutes to go, we're 19 points down. And then there was a goal 
which for those who are not well versed in AFL, it's worth six points. Uh, so we need three to kind of catch up and win the game. Um, we got the first one. Uh, and then all of a sudden there was a bit of hope. And then all of a sudden there were two back-to-back -back goals. And then there was a sense of anticipation. The stadium was on their feet, shouting, screaming, urging our team on. Just for a little bit more fight, just a little bit more. Just one more goal. And as the seconds tick down, a gentleman named Gary Rowan takes a mark right in front of goal, and then the siren sounds. There was a short kick and pure exhilaration. And the, as the volume of the stadium somehow grew even louder, that was passion. Then came the team song, and it was a chorus. The atmosphere was electrifying. That's passion. And to experience it live, that was something special. And then we talked about it all weekend. And that was a bit of a contrast, coming into church on Sunday. The hush and muted breaths of singing. Both feet planted so firmly on the ground like a rock that the Apostle Peter was, would be proud of. Was that passion? Was that joy? If anyone asked me that question right there and then, I would have answered them, of course I have joy. I know that God loves me and that he saved me. How can I not be full of joy? came to a realization that weekend that that I really see the same fervor, the same passion for God as I did just once. And something to reflect upon. Why are we more inclined to jump up and down for our sports team? Or maybe it's your favorite music artist at a concert, or maybe it's your favorite couple getting together in a romantic series, or maybe it's your favorite couple getting together in real life. Do we show more passion and more affection for the things of this world than for God. To 2 Samuel uh, verse 6, uh, 14 to 15 says this, while King David was escorting the ark back into Jerusalem, it says this, wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. Make noise to Yahweh. Make worship Yahweh with joy. Come to Him in joyful song. Christian joy is about breaking out into singing and dancing at God. And it's what the world sees and understands as passion. Now, I'm not saying that we have to come and dance and sing every time we come to service on Sunday. But we know in our hearts where our passions lay. And if you're not sure, just ask a friend and they will tell you what perks you up and keeps you talking for hours and hours. Do we come to God, our God, with the same passion, the same joy that we have for our hobbies? Do you respond to God with your heart? Joy is an affection that comes from the heart. It's an affection of the heart. If you think that you lack passion for God, what are the barriers that's stopping you? What are the barriers that's stopping you from developing an affection for God? Pray for the Holy Spirit to work in you, to illuminate you, and to remove those barriers for you. Now, some of you might be thinking, wow, this is rather charismatic teaching. I'm not sure where this guy's going with this. Well, let, before we do that and get out the pitch folks, I'm going to move on to that, my second point uh, and our fourth action word, which is a head response of thanks to God. See, verse 3 tells us to know that Yahweh is God, that the Lord is God. And this word, no word, is it highlighted in red? Yes, it is. Good. Uh, and this no word is the same intimate knowing word that we've talked about previously. Uh, Dave mentioned it a few weeks back too. Uh, and I won't spend too much time on this, uh, on uh, what it means. 
uh, to know God. We've done that. Dave and Diane has been speaking about it last few weeks, and I'm sure Matt will focus on it next week as well. Uh, and, but, uh, but what I want to do is to talk about the significance of knowing God. That while we come to an understanding that God is our creator God, that we are his people, we are the sheep of his pasture, uh, that we are in fact cared for, protected and nurtured as a shepherd cares for a sheep. Um, but yes, we, I want to focus here on the significance and how that it is the core of our joy and our response of joy in thanks and how it brings us to an action of praise. See, this psalm is highly poetic, and especially when there's a bit of pattern to it. Um, this psalm's like a sandwich, a triplet of action uh, words centered around joy uh, and the single action of knowing God, and then another triplet of action words centered around thanksgiving and praising God. And so I've uh, just kind of highlighted it uh, from our uh, passage uh, here uh, to help you look at it uh, and of course what's the most important part of a sandwich it's not the bread it's the filling right it's the middle bit and so it is with this psalm it's the knowing God and who he is is the most important part who we are in relation in, in relation to God that defines our joy it defines our thanks and our praise and that's also, that's my second point, that our joy is not merely heart affections. It's actually heart affections based off our theological convictions and our knowledge of God. We rejoice and give thanks to God because he is God. He's the one true God, our creator God. It's knowing that we ourselves are not God, but that we are his people. And because that we are his sheep in his pasture, we know that we are cared for. And this is reinforced in the bookend of the Psalms in verse 5, where we're given the reason for joyful song and thanks. It's because God is good and his love and faithfulness endures forever to all generations. God is love. He is faithful to us as our God, as our shepherd. Hence, we respond to him in joy and in praise, which is the final point for today. Verse 4 wraps up the psalm with a quick fire, three actions, which instructs us to give a response to God with our hands, with practical implications, with practical application. Come through his gate and enter into his sheepfold, says the Psalter, and do it in thanks and praise. These are outward expressions of response. Giving thanks and blessing God and blessing God's name is an actionable response to God's goodness, his love, uh, his compassion, and how Jesus brought us in from the outside. And we're made into his family by the blood of Jesus. Joy is what we feel in our hearts because we know what God has done for us. And we are called to action and to respond in thanks and to give him the glory he deserves by blessing his name. And I started this morning with the difference between happiness and joy. Remember back to this distinction between the two, uh, with happiness being an outward expression of elation and, pe uh, and joy being the, this inward peace and contentment? Well, guess what? This psalm debunks this distinction. Joy is not purely and merely an inward-looking peace and contentment. It is so much more. Joy is full of action, and it's full of heart. Sometimes you can tell when someone is full of joy in their life because they radiate it in their expressions. Their outward expressions of elation, what we sometimes call passion in this world, that's joy. It's joy in knowing God. It's 
knowing his love for us, and it shows on their face. It shows in their word. It shows in the bounce in their step as they sing praises to God in worship. And when you start talking to them about God, they perk up and they love to talk about it. That's what joy looks like. That's the joy that Psalm 100 exhibits. It's an outward expression of affection, full of action that responds to the love of God in the good, in the bad, and it's deeply rooted in an intimate knowledge of God and who he is. That the Lord God, Yahweh, he is good, his love endures forever, and his faith extends to all generations, yes, even to us. This psalm is calling us to respond to God, to experience the joy and to experience the joy, express the joy that we have in God. And this might be hard for some of us here uh, today. Um, See, I hit the trifecta of being out of touch with my emotions and affections. Uh, See, I was born a man, I grew up in a broken family, and I was trained as an engineer. Uh, any one of these would have pushed me down the road of, uh, of bottling up my emotions and affections, and guess what? I hit all three. Uh, and guess what? I did actually go down this road of bottling my emotions and affections. Uh, but my joy in God suffered. But God was good, and he loved me through all of that and helped me to realize that joy is more than theology. It's doxology. It means it's it's expression of praise to God. That's what doxology means. It's a praise of expression, an expression of praise to, to God. It's been a long road of engaging my emotions and expressing my affections, and I'm definitely not there yet. I still get my hands above 90 degrees when singing, uh, and my dancing at best is just a seasick inducing sway. But experiencing joy in God is how we endure all the trials, all the sufferings of this world. So come, make noise. Come before our God in song. Come and give thanks to him and bless his name for we have a good God that loves us abundantly. Luke 21, uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 21 is an example of this God praising joy. It says this, at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Maybe you have a healthy relationship with God and experiences his joy daily. Then, May this psalm be an affirmation, an encouragement to you. But if you're more like me and struggle with reconciling an understanding of joy with an experience of joy, then let today be a chance to do some soul searching. Pray to God that he will help you overcome this barrier of expressing joy in your life. And work hard at coming before God in joy. And so to that end, here's a seven-day challenge uh, that I have come up with. During the day, uh, during, at the end of the day, before you go to sleep, find something that you can give thanks to God for, uh, enjoy for, and praise God for it. And now, if you can't find something to find joy in during the day, that's okay. Read through the Psalms that we've, uh, we've done in this series. That's 126, Psalm 20, 33, and, or Psalm 100. And find something in there that gives you joy. And then give thanks for it. Give it a week. See how it goes. And may, it might change your life. And it might give you the joy that you're so seeking. And so I also know that Dave le- usually leaves a slide of questions and actions for you to ponder during the week. And I see how many phones come out when that happens. And so I've got some additional questions uh, for you to think about during the week uh, as we wrap it up. Um, So I'll keep the slide up as we come to finish off in prayer.
So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a loving God, a compassionate God, and your presence is here with us, that your Holy Spirit is working within us. And so, Lord, we come to you with joy. We come to you knowing that you are a good God, and then we feel it in our hearts. We experience the emotion and the elation of being your children, of being your child. And so, Lord, help us to express it. Help us in our every word and deed to express and radiate this joy to everyone we meet. So, Lord, help us and give us this strength to uh, to endure through uh, this trial and sufferings of this world and to give us uh, and let us be shining like stars and be a radiant face uh, to those uh, who, who... desperately need you in their lives and so lord we thank you and pray for all this in your son's name amen thanks so much chi got some good challenges there for us and uh yeah beautiful psalm Uh, reminding us of um, God's goodness to us and uh, yeah I like the the heart side of it and the head side of it and then sharing it it's beautiful it's a challenge now to sing this um, hymn together with joy Uh, oh Christ in you my soul has found Uh, let us uh, yeah conclude our time of worship here together and please do join us in morning tea afterwards Um, But let's stand and sing um, this final hymn together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that uh, flow into each of our lives. 
Uh, as we reflect on all the things that we've heard and sung today, uh, may we be filled with joy at your goodness to us. Lord, thank you that uh, we can come and uh, bring uh, from our own hearts and our own, I guess, pockets, um, yeah, things that uh, can be used to extend your kingdom here. And so we thank you for blessing us that we might be a blessing to uh, our church here. Help us to go this day uh, in your strength and uh, live a life of joy. And as we read from uh, Paul's writings to the Thessalonians, we remember these words for this week. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who called you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. Bless you.